Ah, right. OK, well, welcome. Now, you know that what happens when my name goes on a slide, don't you? It means that I'm about to start again. Now, it looks like we've thinned out a bit, which means I've got few volunteers. I mean, well, uh, it guaranteed people to help me. But I do need a volunteer. So I, I need somebody who's going to be brave enough to just come up the front with me for a second. So come on, audience participation. And as I said earlier, if you don't do it, I'm going to, I'm going to pick on somebody on the front row. Come on up. Thank you very much indeed. Um, what's, your, what's your name? Charlene. Now, I, even I didn't hear that. Say that again. Charlene. Charlene. Very nice to meet you. Come up on here a second, Charlene. Now, what I want you to do mm -hmm. is facing... Anyway. No, no, face, face no. me. Because <laughs> I, I want the beautifulness of this rather than letting these eyes. Okay. And I just need you to do two things for me, all right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see whether or not these guys can do the same, OK? <laughs> so would you do me a favour and describe what's on that wall for me? OK. So it's... Go on, go for <laughs> it. It's white. It's got black words on it. It's got some purple on it as well. Um, yeah, lots of words and black writing. Great. Can you... Can you do me one more favour? Mm -hmm. There's a lady on the fourth row mm -hmm. with a grey top. Can you describe her? No, I don't even know who it is. No? <laughs> oh, don't turn around, that gives it away. OK, now you just stay there a second for me. Could you do me a favour? Can you turn around and can you nice and loudly describe the person in the grey top with the white blouse? Thank you very much. Now, thank you very much. Could you give me a round of applause for our lady here? Um, Darlene, thank you very much indeed. The point of doing that is they both had different viewpoints. Charlene could only describe for me what she could see from the front forwards, and when asked to describe what was going on behind her, couldn't do so. Now, some people might say she needed to be more observant when she entered the room. Or know a bit more about the people? No, not at all. You were set a task and you did exactly what I expected. And then you were given an opportunity to have a look around and you were able very, very uniquely to describe the person that I'd ask you to describe. What I'm really grateful for is you didn't say scruffy. Well done. Anyone who was here this morning knows about that one. Um, so, um, thank you. But imagine it this way. If Charlene was the patient... And if you were the clinician, and you had to only give this much information, but actually Charlene wanted to know what was going on behind, then you'd need to communicate that really, really well. And Charlene also needs to communicate to you really, really well what she can see. And personalised care links so closely to patient safety because if you cannot see each other's opinions and viewpoints, you cannot understand each other's needs, and you also cannot understand each other's desires for your outcome. And we were having a little bit of a discussion a moment ago about this, the fact of one in seven patients don't want or don't like the outcome of surgery um, at the moment. Now, if they'd have had what they are legally entitled to, and let's really be scary, the Personalised Care National Agenda came in in 2014, nine years ago, and was enshrined in the NHS Act of the time, which means that the patient is legally entitled to shared decision-making. It's not a nice to, not an it might be good to, they're legally entitled to. Would you like to guess how many of you, even if you're not a patient, are legally entitled to shared decision making within the health service? 100%. 100% of the population of the UK is legally entitled to a shared decision making conversation. They're also legally entitled to a care plan that sets out 
the needs and desires of their care during their time with the NHS. Now, here's a scary bit. I've had diagnosis of CF since I was 35. My very first clinical diagnosis of a senior, um, of a serious disease was at the age of seven. I am now, don't scarily look at me like that, 52, which by the way, is 35 years longer than I was expected to live. Thank you to you guys, not to anything I did, because the NHS really did keep me alive. Tried to kill me a few times as well, but that's a side point. <laughs> but even now, I do not have a personalised care plan written by any of the seven organisations that I have care from. What's even scary about that is I'm a senior manager in NHS England who's supposed to ensure that patients get a personalised care plan. And, and this is the scary thing about policy, or as we heard earlier, work has done as work has imagined. I'm sure that I imagine that every care... Per no, I know, I don't, because I know it doesn't happen. But what I want to do is to see that policy implementation is implemented properly so that patients and staff understand the responsibilities that they have to each other. Now, what I was asked to do this afternoon is ensure that you guys are enthused into getting patients involved in both their own safety but also in their own care. And I believe those two things are interlinked inexplicably. You cannot do one without the other. You can't ask a patient to say that they're going to be constantly safe if you don't give them the tools and knowledge that they need to enable them to keep themselves safe. And you can't do that unless you have a shared decision-making conversation with them that does preferably start with, you know, what matters to you and not what's the matter with you. And until you can have those conversations properly, as a nation, until we can have those conversations properly, I actually don't believe we can ever resolve every issue within the NHS. Because there needs to be a redrawing of the national contract between our population and our health service. I feel for my GP colleagues who recently were battered in the press because they were told the satisfaction rates had gone down below 70%. You try being a GP through COVID and not expecting your satisfaction ratings to go down below 70%. You try being in the A&E department at this moment in time when, let's just be honest, you're facing some very rude and horrible people at times known as patients and occasionally staff friendless who aren't supporting you and giving you what you need, then we're never going to get to that position of having high quality safety care. So if you want high quality, safe, reliable health care, what you need more than anything else is to have a conversation with your patients. One to one, where you simply say, how can I support you? What knowledge do you need? And how can I prevent us doing something to you that really you don't want? And that way, we can release the time in the NHS that we know is going wrong to do so much better. Please, if I ask you to do anything today, engage with your patients. Keep them safe by enabling them to be partners with you in everything you do. That's me for the afternoon. I'm going to now introduce our two wonderful speakers who will be joining us for this section. And we will start with Niall. Um, and Niall Downey, um, I, I, I said earlier that I'd um, uh, been stalking people on, on um, LinkedIn. Uh, Niall actually stalked me today, uh, yesterday um, and, and, and said, oh, could, could we be friends? And actually, I know of, I, I know of Niall's work 
and the, the great work that his organisation is doing. And I think we're looking, we're going to have a really great session with Nile in a moment. Um, and, and I love his title, Oops, Why Things Go Wrong. I think that's just brilliant. Um, and then after Niall, we are going to have How Can Reframing of Women's Health Improve Outcomes by Mariette uh, Big. And um, uh, it, Mariette is an author at the Hackett Book Group, and I look forward very much to hearing this. We had a discussion earlier about um, how EDI as a whole uh, is needed better. Um, equality, diversity and inclusion needed so much more in the health service. And we know that uh, women's health care We've done so much bad things recently, and we've seen so many bad things happening with women's health care. We need to do better, and I really look forward to hearing from you.